got this beauty of a transformer. It appears to be called a Foster, and I'll have a look at the nameplate shortly. But look at the detail here. You got uh, silica gel, oil reservoir. And that's the header tank. Uh, speaking to the project manager who changed this thing, it's supposed to have a fault on the HV winding. So I'll be doing some tests on this, and I'll put my name already on it. And uh, we'll have a look at that, what the problem is. The pitch, so there's a pilk cable going in there. Look at this, you've got even the excess men, excess hole covers here in the top. So when you drop the hole level below, below the top lid, you can uh, get access to the terminals. And have a look, I use the tip changer, and I hope we can get the nameplate. It's amazing how quick things go. Uh, somebody's nicked the nameplate already, um, but I got a photo of that. I took it this morning, so I will edit into this video. Looks like the joint is going to open the pitted area because I doubted that this transfor transformator has uh, failed on an uh, internal fault. Um, then I will have a crack at doing a test on it. But it is a Foster. 300 kVA but to get a uh, transformer here so the way it works um, normally in a transformer the all level sits around here all gets warmer rises lowers whatever breathing in out that goes through silica gel and the crystals yeah, so it maintains uh, that uh, the whole area with the transformer winding and core and etc is always fully covered in all beautiful piece of equipment this Some transformers you can't test with a normal multimeter, you need one of these, it's a bit more puff and it works actually quite well. So um, I did a continuity test, about 10 ohms per winding, so I've got this here and then I need to hang on, stand by, I need to energize this device. I'm going between two phases and it takes a few seconds for the air to get. Hang on, I'm going to put it on here. And I did the test before, it goes down to about 10 ohms. I think the HV winding is alright, I don't know why they failed it. It could be a dodgy connection somewhere. Oh, this is a bit higher, that's about... Oh, that's coming down. Twelve. So I'm just measuring the winding resistance, so it's 12 ohms. Now I'm going to the other phase. That's that one there. Get a flipping wire out of the way here. Come on. That's about eight, eight ohms. There's an imbalance there. And the lucky last one is between these two. Time to charge the winding. It's an inductive coil, but you put DC through it. Nine. Should not either be on each face, should be about the same. That's about eight ohms as well. Seven and a half. Check this particular winding, that seems to have the crappy readings. Ah, wire falls off. Hang on, there it goes there, I got it back on. Takes a wee while. 
Uh, it's just about 16. Sixteen ohms, yeah, there's a problem in the H3 vining. Should have dropped down. There we go. So that are the numbers one and two, these uh, particular cables. One and two. Because that was three, so the fault is between one and two. And they haven't unpitted the box, so yeah, something has failed. <laughs> 